on January 2nd, 2023, with about five minutes and 58 seconds left in the game against the Cincinnati Bengals. My dear friend here tackled wide receiver T. Higgins, who was running with the ball. He hit DeMar in the chest with his helmet, and uh, DeMar made the tackle, as he always does. He got up after that tackle, stood up for a second, and then collapsed on the field. And it's been reported that DeMar was in cardiac arrest during that time. This man's life was potentially ending there on the field that day. With just over six minutes left in the first quarter, the Bengals have the ball. On the second play of the drive, Joe Burrow passes to T. Higgins and lowers his shoulder hoping to gain a few extra yards. DeMar Hamlin makes the tackle, and as you can see, everything appears normal. Hamlin returns to his feet, adjusts his helmet, then collapses on the spot. Now another Bills player is down. Whistles are blown and gameplay is immediately stopped. Within 10 seconds of this moment, athletic trainers and medical professionals swarm the field. Emergency CPR is conducted for 10 minutes as an ambulance arrives soon after. DeMar is down on the field for nearly 20 minutes. Both teams surround him in shock while his family runs down to the field to be by his side. The stadium that was uncontrollably loud just moments ago is now completely silent. I truly loved the game of football. You know, football was truly my piece away from the world. My whole entire life is chaos, but I come to practice for these two and a half hours and I am at peace. But to have that snatched away from you, you know, and then have the space where you truly had your peace and now you're facing your fears in that space and having to overcome that whole feeling, it was something that I really had to work for. I remember uh, just all the emotions of everything just kind of hit me and I was just crying tears. I've had a thousand emotions, you know, running through, you know, I, I was scared. I didn't want to go through everything I went through once again. I seen the obligation, you know, and I seen everything that I was standing for. And I knew how my journey of just continuing on, it inspired so many people across the world and it still does till this day. And to be able to stand for that and to be able to be the example behind that was more powerful to me than the negative emotion of the fear and the anxiety and things like that. I knew that I had to take it step by step one day at a time. I couldn't worry about, you know, trying to suit up and play in the playoffs again or I would have drove myself crazy. I had to know that it's going to be a journey. People deal with ACLs and don't come back in the time period that I did. Even when some people return off of ACLs, if they're not their same selves, that first season of their back, they need time. They need steps. They got to put the right foot in front of the left and they got to walk the journey. They got to go through the ugly phases, you know? I feel like I just went through an ugly phase this whole season, but I'm super proud of myself. You know, my mindset was, you know, God got me. You know, God got me. I'm also here with the people that saved my life. So if worse comes to worse, they got me. Once I actually took that step and we're on the field and it's down set hut and whistles are blowing and people are running around, I'm just playing football again. I was free. Literally one of the most inspiring real life stories of all time. So hey guys, are you frustrated with where you're at right now? Maybe stunted in your progress? Well, if you are, I want to recommend a place for you to go called Growth Day. Growthday.com forward slash ed. It is the number one personal development app on the planet. It's got all kinds of high performance techniques in there, courses, accountability, journaling, live speeches from some of the top influencers in the world, including me. It's an overall environment to change your life. Growthday.com forward slash ed. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. So the man that we're going to talk with today is a very important man to me. There are not five people on planet Earth that I would rather speak to today than this young man. And uh, my dream list for people that would be on this podcast, he is at the very, very top of the list because uh, he's a story of resiliency, uh, faith, strength, comeback. And um, you all know his story. On January 2nd, 2023, with about five minutes and 58 seconds left in the game against the Cincinnati Bengals, my dear friend here uh, tackled wide receiver T. Higgins, who was running with the ball. He hit DeMar and, uh, in the chest with his helmet, and uh, DeMar made the tackle, as he always does. And uh, he got up after that tackle, stood up for a second, and then collapsed on the field. And uh, in that moment, um, our country was captivated, and literally hundreds of millions of people were in prayer 
for this uh, precious young man. I don't know that I've ever said this and meant it more. I am so grateful that you are here today. And welcome to the show, Damar Hamlin. Good to have you here, brother. Man, thanks for having me. I, I appreciate, you know, the intro. You know, you, you've talked to, you know, some of the, the biggest and the best across the world, you know. So to be in that, you know, top five, I actually wanted to talk to, um, it's, it's, you know, it's an honor. So um, I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. I, I'm not sure you're not number one. Um, I just use a little wiggle room there. But I have to tell you, and the reason is, is that I just believe in some strange way, Damar, I know this sounds crazy to start the show with it, but I almost feel like God blessed you with this opportunity um, mm -hmm. to express to people things that really only you are qualified to express. So without getting into every single medical thing that happened, we're going to save that for an incredible documentary that he has coming out with my friend Bo Flynn sometime, hopefully this year. Um, but take us through your recollections of that moment, the game. I'm sure it was like any other game for you. But was there? Uh, what are your recollections of that moment, if you have some? Um, well, first, you know, uh, definitely uh, shout out to Bo. You know, that's my guy. Um, that's really my guy. Um, you know, and uh I mean, um, you know, just leading up to the game, I remembered it was a it was a it was a very big game, you know, and that's that's that was the the lead of everything, you know, it was for the number one seed in the AFC. And um, you know, that was all that was on my mind. Um we had the number one seed at the time. The Bengals were the number three seed, but they had they won the tiebreaker with the Chiefs. So if they if they won the game, they would go to the one seed. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't worried about any of that. I'm just worried about let's get this one seed so, you know, we can finish up the regular season and then get a bye week. Uh, you know, it was my first full season in the NFL. So, you know, my body was uh, like, you know, super banged up. I'm making 10 to 12 tackles a game, um, you know. Uh, so I'm like, let's do whatever we can to get this bye week in the playoffs. Um, so, yeah. you know, all week, I just remember a great week of practice. Um, I was super motivated, just like every other week. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm locked in, you know, I, I like to, I like to trust my instincts, but you know, you don't get to use those instincts if you don't know what's going on in the game. So, you know, I'm, I'm a super student of the game. Um, I watch a lot of film on my own time. I dissect notes that, you know, my coaches give us. And, you know, I was super locked into the game plan for that week. Um, and, you know, the, the atmosphere was set. Um, it was the most watched game on Monday Night Football. Um, and like you said, man, it, it truly feels like a blessing from God um, to, really? to in a, yes, in a, in a unique way, because, um, you know, the, the platform that my platform that he's magnified, you know, because all the work that I'm, you know, currently doing um, was all in vision already you know it was all in processes already i was just in a small space planting the seeds already before everyone were, was paying attention um but i always had big visions and big goals of you know working myself um whether it was through you know hard work of a long 10-year career of having success in the nfl and then having this platform um or if it was you know by the grace of god you know seeing that you know i was one of his soldiers on the front line really doing good work uh, and, you know, he, he, he hand, he handpicked me, he hand selected me, um, you know, he, he, uh, he, he brought me through some traumatic things, you know what I mean? Um, and, but, you know, he used me, he, he truly used me. He brought the world together in, in love and prayer. You know, man, I, I had people that said they were atheists that have never prayed in their life. You know, that told me that they, they got down on both of their knees and prayed for me to, to you know, see another day. Um, and I don't know what's more powerful than that. You know, I don't I don't know what I would have been able to do in my life um, to have an impact on people that ha that would have had that much meaning. You know what I mean? Because that meaning right there is a lot bigger than just football. That meaning is a lot bigger than just accolades and just trophies and even even bigger than the the ultimate goal in football, which is, you know, to get a gold jacket. Mm -hmm. You know, I think to truly have non-believers take a second to where they see the man that's created this whole life all because of me, uh, man, that's that's that that right there. Uh, it truly makes me feel special. It truly makes me feel touched. 
and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll I'll be forever indebted. Um, but I'm continuing on to do to do good work. What a great answer, man! What a great answer. A couple things struck me about that game. I was watching the game, and um, obviously, prayers for you. Not really knowing what had happened, um, but knowing something was really serious. Speaking of faith, I, I'm I'm sure you've at least watched the playback a couple times. But one thing that struck me because we're going to protect some things for your documentary. Um, but one thing that struck me was no one had an answer. So, well, this beautiful young soul was laying there there. No one had an answer. Uh, coaches didn't have an answer. The officials didn't have an answer. We'll talk about Denny Kellington in a minute. Thank God he had an answer. Um, but even the TV broadcast, remember them kind of threw a, they threw at one point to Booger McFarland and he's like, I just don't know what to say, but to pray. What was interesting to me was that situation that God used you in, it seemed to me, I'd like you to speak to this, because I'm sure in reflection you've heard this from other people, the players were very emotional, so everyone knew something was really serious. But it's interesting, when we get to the end of our own understanding in life, in other words, we were at the end of our own ability to understand, what did everybody go do? They went and prayed. Players on the field, people in the television studios, people at home. And it was almost as beautiful, to some extent, example of our acceptance of our own understanding of events. We almost have to surrender and have faith in those moments. And everybody, as you said, from every walk of life, seemed to reflect and just say they were praying. Have you ever thought about that part of it, that one of the examples of it is just we don't understand what's happening here, and so we sort of surrender to something greater than ourselves? Yes, you know, and... I learned that lesson early on in life, um, you know, is when you don't know, you have to give it up to God, you know, and you you have to use faith and you have to use hope. And, you know, faith doesn't work if you don't do if you don't do the work as well. And sometimes the work is praying, you know, so that's that's a common ground that, you know, as people that we all kind of have had an understanding of, you know, some have, you know, relied on it more than others. But, you know, I think it's fundamental um, for for everyone, you know, to truly grasp that, you know, and when, when we don't understand things, um, pray, you know what I mean? And, and go to a higher source. And even when you do, you know, you we never do. You know, even when you think you do, still give it up. You know what I mean? And that's that's how I've always kind of lived my life. You know, a, a lot of things um, would, would would stress me, you know, on the journey of, you know, just being a young kid having a dream, having a goal, and no one in my community ever reaching or achieving or coming close to this goal. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I didn't have the proper guidance. So that that gap of not knowing if I was doing the right things the right way, if I was doing enough, if I was doing enough, if I was doing it the right way, or if I, you know, just all along the lines of doing enough of what it took, um, it would it created a lot of confusion in my world. Um, and, it, and it created a lot of like anxiety because, you know, I wanted to achieve just success and make it into the NFL and being able to take care of my family and being able to give back to my community. Um, it created a lot of anxiety within those spaces because I wanted to achieve my goal so bad. So the only peace that I found within that space, um, you know, was doing my research, you know, having idols, you know, having people that are already doing it um, at a, at a high level, how I wanted to, um, you know, maybe just they weren't in my personal life to be able to show me. But, you know, the biggest thing that I relied on was, you know, my prayer, you know, my faith and, you know, giving everything up to God because, you know, God is all knowing. He's all understanding, you know, and, and we don't we don't have the answers as much as we, we assume we don't have the answers. So that's what I've been relying on, you know, since a young kid, you know, a, a very young kid. Um, just figured things also, out. Though you also relied, Damar, on another one of God's children or, or a team of them. And in our lives, people, you know, I think you would agree that God will send people into our lives that can literally alter them. I'm sure you knew, I think Denny's the assistant athletic trainer. I'm sure you knew Denny before. I doubt you and this other group of people, I doubt you ever thought how important they would be at some point in your life. But why don't you tell everybody about him and and – I, I assume your gratitude for him and the other people that really intervened in a moment where you needed them the most. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I knew how important, you know, our training staff was to my career, obviously, because, you know, without the training room, um, you won't be able to go perform how you need to go perform. 
every given day. You know, I go in there every day and I get stretched by Denny um, before we start our meetings, before I go eat my breakfast. And, you know, that's kind of our moment. Uh, that's kind of our alone moment, you know, to one another. We don't really say too many words uh, during that stretch period, but, you know, it's just the comfort, you know, of, of going through something so traumatic um, together. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just a moment that I appreciate every day. Um, and it just allows me to reflect on how far I've come, you know, and uh, it's, it's a crazy experience, you know, and, I have a truly appreciation for the entire Buffalo Bills organization because um, from the second I walked into the building, you know, they've treated me um, world class. You know, they've treated me like a son that they have truly cared about. And um, specifically to my athletic training staff, you know, I, I definitely want to give everyone a shout out. Um, you know, we got Denny, Denny Covington, we got Nate, Tabani, Marissa, Joe. You know, they truly all had a hand in, you know, being my care team, you know, and making sure that, you know, I can keep showing up every day um, into the building, you know. So I have a super duper special relationship with them. And sometimes on my downtime or off days, I'll just go sit in my trainers, sit in Nate's office and just read a book. You know what I mean? Uh, and just and just that's my alone time. But, you know, the training room is truly a safe space for me um, within the world, you know, not even just my building, you know. I truly feel my safest, you know, when I'm in Buffalo and I'm in that training room with my trainers because, you know, they experienced life with me a little bit differently. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll be forever indebted to them as well. Yeah. So it's reported, everybody, that Denny, you know, um, issued CPR to DeMar when he was on the field. And it's been reported that DeMar was in cardiac arrest during that time. And this is the most fascinating thing about you, brother. So... As the story goes, you kind of wake up a little while later, a few days later. Tell everybody the first thing you say to your family when you wake up. Think about this. This man's life was potentially ending there on the field that day, and he wakes up. Do you remember what you said to everybody first? Yeah, man. Well, I I, really, I didn't say it. I, I wrote it out because, um, you know, I had breathing tubes in my mouth. I wasn't even speaking yet probably for like another few days. That's another story, uh, you know ended up pulling my own breathing tube out. Um, but um, I, yeah, I was a warrior mode, man. I was trying to get back. But um, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't speaking yet. Um, so, you know, I wrote it out and I asked, did we win? <laughs> That's so that was the first, you know, that was the first thought that came to my mind. You know, I had remembered that I was playing in the game, you know, and I was unsure of how I got out of the game and how I got to the hospital and, how I'm just in a hospital bed, but, you know, just that competitive nature, you know, and just that me thinking about my brothers and the people that I, I, I line it up and go to war with every day, um, you know, and, and like I said, I knew what was at stake walking into that stadium, you know, I wanted that number one seat because I wanted to get that bow week in the playoffs and, you know, play two more games and go get a Super Bowl. So, um, you know, the first thing I asked was, did we win? And it was just pretty much me just, uh, you know, that's just my competitive nature. Uh, me thinking about the people that I I put blood, sweat, and tears into the game about. And, you know, just me caring about my, my, my peers and my team. So, hey, guys, as you know, I've partnered up with my good friend, Brennan Bruchard, who's created the greatest personal development system that has ever been designed called Growth Day. If you go to growthday.com forward slash ed, you can get all the information. But it's that time of year where everybody's trying to form new habits. They've got new resolutions and goals. And you need an environment and you need some coaches and you need to be able to do it super inexpensively. And that's where growthday.com forward slash ed comes in. There's everything from journaling to accountability programs, live messages every Monday from myself and other influencers. There's an opportunity for you to, to get courses that would cost thousands of dollars completely for free. It's incredible. Go to growthday.com forward slash ed and check it out. I, I want to ask you this. So first off, that blows my mind. Not how did I get here? Not what happened? Not am I alive? Am I in heaven? You know, where am I? It's did we win? I just want everybody to hear that just for a second, right? I mean, that gives you an idea of this man's character. At some point, and by the way, I'm glad that you cleared that up because I think you were on a ventilator for three days, weren't you? Three days? Yeah, yeah. A couple of days. Three and days. Then, uh, yep. Three days. At, at what point do you walk us through this? Everyone in life, you went through – Damar, you went through, you know, ultimately everybody's greatest fear, right? And, and their greatest fear for their child. Now, I've read a lot about your mom and dad. What an amazing 
family you come from and uh thank you. Thank you. and the way that you were raised and that you know Demar was always known you guys as just like this giving kind good person in fact Demar I should tell you this I won't say which teammate it was but um I had a house for sale before this happened and one of your very well-known teammates was looking at buying one of my houses <laughs> and um believe it or not before this happened with you your name had come up in conversation with me and we were talking about you know because i said to him i said you're such a good guy he goes there's good dudes in the nfl man there's good guys everywhere and he ended up uh naming three guys on the team that were the good guys and you were one of the three names that he gave that day so i'm just curious when did you figure out what happened and then what what is that what's that moment like where you eventually wake up and you go oh my gosh, I'm, I'm sure at some point it dawned on you or someone finally explained to you what happened. What does that feel like? Does it feel like it's a movie you lived in? Does it feel like it didn't really happen? Is it is it shocking? Like, what does that feel like in those moments? Um. Well, you know, my mindset was kind of, you know, as a as an athlete and, you know, how I was raised, my mindset was, you know, always, you know, whatever we go through, let's find a way to get through it and let's get to where we where we see ourselves being in the end. So, you know, um, I, I figured out things, you know, through my family, um, through my doctors, through my through my peers, through my friends who were there, um, you know, and, you know, my I actually had a kind of like a back and forth argument kind of with my dad uh, in the hospital. And I was kind of like, you know, starting to get back to myself a little bit more because, you know, um, and he was 100 percent right by explaining this to me. But you know, I wasn't there for, you know, everything that they they experienced of the situation. So I had to have a respect for it. You know, I had to learn and, and, and get a different perspective for, for the situation, even outside of my own perspective. Even though I'm the one that's going through it, I had to respect, you know, everything that my mom and my dad just experienced, you know, I, I just even seeing me like that, you know, so um. Uh, it was, that was a, that was a journey in itself right there. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I learned, I learned through, you know, just seeing, hearing, you know, I was, I couldn't turn the TV channel without seeing myself on, uh, every single channel, literally one through 56. So, you know, I actually, I, I found the love for motocross. <laughs> <laughs> I found the love for motocross. I actually, you know, I learned a lot about the sport, you know, for seven days. And, um, you know, it's, it actually takes a lot of skill. It's not easy. It's very dangerous. <laughs> um, it's a lot of it's a lot of bicycles and a small track. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, that was the only thing on TV that I could watch without having to hear about my situation, which is why mm -hmm. I explained um, the relationship that I learned with motocross, because, you know, I couldn't turn left or right without mm -hmm. having to run back into it, you know, and. Even like you say, man, um, three days or whatever, uh, I truly haven't, you know, I, I truly haven't revisited all the details, you know, of my situation directly, um, you know, just because um, it's, it, it still feels so soon to me. And, um, you know, like I said, as long as I'm focusing on the part of, you know, understanding the blessings that I received and understanding the responsibility that comes off of it, um, you know, my main concern right now is just, you know, being thankful uh, every day, you know, to be able to just be able to take that deep breath, man. I take 10 deep breaths before I get up every day um, just to keep myself grounded and remember, you know, where where new life started for me. Um, you know, so, yeah, just just being able to remember. You know, the blessings that I receive and knowing the responsibility that comes with them, uh, I've just been letting that lead my focus and, you know, I know there will be a time down the line where I truly, 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 truly want to know more and I want more answers and they're there for me. You know, that's why I say that that training room is truly a safe space, you know, because I can walk in there and, and you know, I can I can have a conversation of, of knowing direct more details whenever I want, you know, but that's that's my main focus right now. You know, staying, staying stay in focus, acknowledging, you know, the blessings that I received and the obligations that come with them. That's interesting to me that it's that fresh to you. So I was prepping for the interview because, you know, the event happens and in your life, it's every day of your life. But for the average fan, they go on with their life, but they never forget that moment. 
I mean, like, I remember what happened when, you know, uh, I'm old enough, which is crazy, but I remember, you know, when 9-11 happened. I remember where I was when the OJ chase happened. Uh I remember where I was. I remember where I was when the incident happened with DeMar Hamlin. I mean, it's one Mm -hmm. of these, like, handful of moments of my life. I remember where I was. And, but when I was prepping for this, I mean, everybody that's a casual, kind of a casual fan, when I was prepping for this, it blew my mind. This was barely a year ago. Yeah. This was barely a year ago. For some reason to me, it was a couple seasons ago. And everyone that's a casual football fan, let me just tell you how remarkable this man is. He played in the NFL last year. He got back on the field and played in the NFL. He played five games last year. Are you – I mean, we're going to get into all the details of everything, but he had cardiac arrest on the field. He was resuscitated. This man comes back and plays football in the same calendar year. Like, first off, how remarkable is he and how good is God? Right, like absolutely amazing. Literally, all when I say that to you, Demar, are you like, what in the world? Even when I say that back to you, is that part of you like, I can't believe that? I mean, uh, like you know, it's it's I live it every day, and I know how hard it was, um, you know, to actually do it, man. I remember uh, just all the emotions of everything just kind of hit me, and I was just crying tears driving up to a football camp, you know, because. I had I've had a thousand emotions, you know, running through. You know, I I was scared. I was, you know, I didn't want to go through everything I went through once again, you know, and I that would never that was never my main focus because you know you can't move forward focusing on the negative, but it's the reality of the situation. You know, I I had emotions. I I was I had fear. I had anxiety. I, I had all of those emotions, you know. But I seen, like I said, the obligation, you know, and I seen everything that I was standing for. And I knew how my journey of just continuing on, it inspired so many people across the world and it still does till this day, Um, you know, and to be able to stand for that and to be able to, you know, be the example behind that um, was more powerful to me than the negative emotion of the fear and the anxiety and things like that. But it, it, like, it does sound crazy to me. Like, if you were telling me the story and I was unaware, I would definitely be like, no way. Like, there's no way somebody did that, especially a contact sport. And then, like, you know, people touch the stove and realize it's hot and won't ever do it again because they know what happened to them. Let alone someone, you know, redoing the same thing that took their life away. Right. So, you know. Lamar, it's it's it's, it's literally, li- literally one of the most inspiring real-life stories of all time there is no way that night watching that football game had i told everybody watching that game tonight and if you hadn't seen it you can go youtube the clip or whatever but i was gonna tell you and i said to you in this calendar year this man will be back on a football field tackling somebody again that is if you wonder in your life if you can overcome odds and adversity if you can come from a low place and climb back you need to look literally no further than this guy right here literally no further and that lesson you just said about, you know, the dream and the hopes of what you could do for other people was greater than your fear is such a great formula to overcome things in our lives. I got to ask you this, though. I mean, if you don't mind being a little bit personal, mm-hmm. that first tackle, you're out of practice, the first tackle, right? That first time you had to have some trepidation about that, right? There had to be some part of you or was it just like, I'm back. It's what I've always done. I've done this two billion times. Or was there a, was that next tackle yeah. slightly different? Yeah, you know, that was that was how I anticipated my mindset being. Like, I'm back and, you know, it, it won't be about anything, but uh, it, it was the furthest thing away from that. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it was a journey. Like I said, man, going up and going into football camp, I, I was shedding tears driving uh, on the road because, of, you know, felt like, you know, there was nothing in my life that made me face my fears like that. Nothing in my life made me face my fears like that right there. Um, but, you know, getting into the first time I hit, um, what I did do a good job of with my trainers was prepping for every moment, you know, and even down to, you know, when I first decided to play, meeting with, you know, our upstairs and just getting the right, just getting the right rehabilitation in in, in, um, in place, you know, getting the right therapist, you know, being able to make sure that whenever we get to this position in the fall or training camp where I'm tackling and doing all of this again, that. You know, I've already had the proper steps to lead me up to it the right way. So with my trainers, you know, we we were practicing tackling 
you know, kind of through all the off season, throughout the summer, even before, you know, we got into pads. And when we got into pads the first day, the off day before that, you know, I was out there with my trainers, you know, tackling dummies and doing things like that just to kind of to prep it in. But, um, you know, once I got into the field with my teammates, before I could even make a tackle, um, you know, my coach sent me on a blitz in practice um, the first day in pads. He sent me on a blitz uh, the first play. You know, I, I love my coach. You know, I, I love it. You know, I, I I love the mindset. You know what I mean? Like, let's see what I got. But so, um, you know, it sends me on a blitz. Um, and, you know, the, the lineman went down and I kind of came way too free. You know, and every time that you come free like that, there's going to be a lineman coming around to hit you right in the air hole and try to throw you off to the field and to the stands. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I came down and I seen that lineman go down really fast. And I'm like, OK, something's up. Like, something's wrong. I'm in the backfield way too fast, way too free. So here comes Dion Dawkins, you know, our, our, our one of our best tackles. And he just air holes me, and I'm doing everything I can to, like, anchor my legs so I just don't go flying. You know what I mean? So uh, that was, like, the first – that was my welcome back to football moment right there. So, you know, <laughs> that even before a tackle let me know that, you know, if I can withstand that right there, I'll be okay. <laughs> God gives you an ear hole tackle for the yeah, first time you get contact. But, uh, my, first, my first tackle tackle, I think, was in the preseason game. Oh, um, man, you know, my mindset was – you no, know, God got me. You know, God got me. Um, I'm also here with the people that saved my life. So if worse comes to worse, they got me as well. And, you know, just once you cross those lines, you, you, you know, that was the best part about it all. Um, you know, I would really have a lot of anxiety um, on the, on the sideline, you know, of, you know, maybe two yards of getting onto the field. But, you know, once I actually took that step and we're on the field and, it's down set hut and whistles are blowing and people are running around. I'm just playing football again. I was free. And, you know, that was a beautiful feeling. Um, that was a beautiful feeling. Um, and it just, it made me remember how much I appreciate my teammates mm -hmm. because, you know, the people that you're out there playing with, I, I, I underestimated how much that you truly do it for them and that you truly you know, have to bring 11 people together as one and you are not out there alone. That was the biggest thing. You know, even though I went through this situation, I wasn't, I'm not out there alone. You know, it's not one versus the other team. I'm out here with my teammates and we're all, you know, trying to do the same job together to reach a common goal. So, you know, man, I, I'm, I've, I've always been a team player and I've always, you know, loved to you know, put the team's needs and the team's goals ahead of, you know, whatever I, I'm experiencing. So, you know, that was I was able to do that. And I, and me being able to do that, uh, it made everything just like another day in the office. Hey, guys. So I've been talking about Babbel for a long time because to some extent they've actually changed my life. And the reason is, like you, I wanted to learn a second language. I think everybody should speak a second language. And I learned Spanish in high school, but I couldn't speak it fluently. And it was an outcome of mine last year. And I can tell you, a year later, I've made a ton of progress. I was recently in Mexico. I was having really conversations with people who are telling me they were impressed with my Spanish. And 100% that's because of Babbel. Because the way you learn to speak a new language is in total immersion. The lessons are 10 minutes long. You can start really speaking the language better in about three weeks because they're crafted by about 200 different language experts. So whatever languages you want to learn, you can start slowly but make progress quickly with Babbel. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 50% off a one-time payment for a lifetime Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash mylet. Yeah, get 50% off at babbel.com slash mylet. That's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash mylet. Rules and restrictions apply. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp, and I'm really grateful that it is because I'm such a big believer in therapy, and I actually love the way BetterHelp does it. You know, therapy has a wide range of usefulness in our lives. If we've got something really serious that's bothering us, we've got anxiety or depression or we're just down, therapy can help. But you know what? If we even just have things we want to talk out loud about, we just want to work through. Sometimes it's just about hearing ourselves talk to another human being. Therapy can help you there as well. There's a wide range of reasons why just being introspective and working on yourself with the help of a professional is really worthwhile. And I love the way BetterHelp does it because you can do it online. If you don't vibe with your therapist, they'll switch one out with you immediately and you can get a brand new one. Visit BetterHelp.com slash EdShow today to get 10% off your first month. 
That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Ed Show. Brother, this is just an unbelievable conversation. I just have to tell you. I'm sitting here. I appreciate you know Inky it. Jo- yeah. Do you know who Inky Johnson is? I do. I, I actually do. Yeah. yeah. Motivation. Right, Inky. Yeah, he's a good friend. He's been on the show a couple times. Anyway, he was sitting in here with me just a few weeks ago. I just have to tell you, uh, I think Inky's one of the great speakers in the world, if not my favorite. He's also one of my favorite well. people. Yeah, and a lot of you may not know this, but Inky was playing at University of Tennessee. He was going to be a first-round pick, took a hit, lost the use of his arm, couldn't play anymore. And he's paralleled that into, I'm just telling you right now, once football's over a decade from now, whenever you're done playing, you're going to be one of the top motivational speakers in the world. I can already tell from watching you right now, you're going to change okay. millions of people's lives. By the way, this interview is going to change millions of people's lives. And you'll use this clip in your sizzle reel when you walk up on the stage and speak. Um, <laughs> but I got to ask you this, just specifically, how has it changed you? How has the experience changed you? Clearly, you were a guy of faith before. Yeah. But you don't go through this exactly the same on the other side. How's it changed you? Yeah, you don't. You really don't. Um, it's changed me in a number of ways. Um, you know, the first ones that stand out to me is, like I said, uh, the obligation that comes with the blessings. So, you know, realizing that, um, you know, it, it made me want to clean up my life. It made me want to appreciate, you know, first and foremost, it made me want to appreciate my health. So, you know, just cleaning up my my life, you know, health wise, getting getting proper sleep, you know, getting proper nutrition, um, you know, things that you already do as an athlete. But, you know, kind of prioritizing them um, on a different level. Um, it made me appreciate my family a little bit more. It made me appreciate all of the free things in life. You know, it made me appreciate family, it made me appreciate love, it made me appreciate peace. Um, it's made me more emotional. I, I cry more. <laughs> I cry more now, um, you know, than I ever have. And um, that's something a guy named Murphy Jensen, um, a, a tennis player who dealt with cardiac arrest, uh, he told me that it did the same thing for him. And, you know, me being me, being me, you know, I haven't really been emotional since I was a young kid. So it was it was real surprising to me as it, like, started to creep up on me. Um, but it's something I, I've embraced, you know, because I just have a special way of appreciating life now. Um, it's changed me in a number of ways. You know, that's a question that I would definitely want to deep dive, like dive deeper into because I've adjusted a lot of my life, you know. But one thing about it with the new platform and, you know, the world, you know, wanting to pull me in a thousand directions uh, and I'll continue to I'll continuously always you know, bring it back to my faith because, you know, I wouldn't even be here without it. But it made me truly focus on my one relationship with God and Mm. allowing that one relationship to sort out the other ones, Mm. you know, to truly allow me to let me know who should be in my personal life, who I should do business with, um, who I should have my fun with, you know, who I should do things for, who I shouldn't. Um, I've allowed that one relationship to guide all my other ones. And that's what truly allows me to have peace because we, I, I didn't have it for a while because, you know, I was still trying to do for everyone in my past. Um, I was trying to do for people that I felt like I, I owed. You know, I was I was just all over the place. I was I was all over the place every which angle. So, you know, once I truly focused on that one relationship and I asked that one to sort all the other ones, everything kind of got smoother, you know, and um, I talked with a, you know, obviously a real profound safety, Rodney Harrison. Um, And, you know, I told him that same kind of story. And, you know, he told me, like, he was, he was so happy to hear that that was my focus. And he told me how I take it to the next step is I try to implement that into my teammates. And I try to implement that into the locker room and try to affect, have that same effect that I'm having in my own life and other people's lives. So um, that was just real powerful to to hear, you know, just from, you know, someone older. I always respect, you know, the people that came before me and I love advice, you know. So that was just real powerful to see that, you know, even when I, I can take it to another level. I don't know why I'm crying, but I'm crying. I'm not sure why this moment's got me that way. Um, I appreciate you. Man. Yeah, appreciate you. Um, man, you got me right there. Sorry about that. Uh You know what I'm curious about is, do you have any imposter syndrome about all this? You know, as my platform grew, 
more and more people started listening to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, man, if they knew how much of this stuff I'm still working on trying to figure out, you know, everyone's looking at me for advice and I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this or that or the other thing. And it took me a while to accept that God will use my imperfections and the things I don't know. And the fact that I'm more like most people than not to connect me with them, that I don't have to be, I don't have to have every answer. I don't have to know everything. Um, it finally can, you know, dawned on me that it's okay, that all that I'm not perfect. You know, they don't have it all figured out. Is there any part of you that's like, God, why me? Like, I mean, I'm still, I'm, I'm in my mid twenties. I'm trying to figure all this stuff out myself. Is there, is there any part of you that feels that way? Or do you just accept the anointing and the calling and you go with it? You know, um, maybe two times over this last year and two months have I ever decided to like, you know, let myself have a feeling of why me, um, you know, and it's natural, you know, it's, it's supernatural. And you know, a lot of it came with football because I truly loved the, the game of football. You know, football was truly my piece away from the world. You know, I would go to practice. I would have so much going on in my personal life in college, like, arguing with girlfriends and dealing with class and I'm probably arguing with my parents about something just being a young college kid like my whole entire life is chaos but I come to practice for these two and a half hours and I am at peace I feel like I'm sitting at the beach listening to the waves you know while I'm at practice because I truly love the process of getting better um you know but to have that snatched away from you you know and then have the space where you truly had your peace and now you're facing your fears in that space and having to overcome that whole feeling. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was something that, you know, I, 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 I really had to work for, you know, but, um, you know, I only asked myself why I me mean, maybe two times in the whole time. And then I will always just correct myself. And, you know, I understand why, you know, I, I, I truly know that God seen me as somebody who was, you know, doing his work, you know, I was out here, and I don't I don't mean to say that like I'm the most spiritual person in the world or, you know, uh, like I don't remember the last time I showed up for church on a Sunday. Um, you know what I mean? Just my personal life is busy. Um, I, I have a lovely church that I do go to back at home in the Keys Rocks, uh, Pennsylvania. But, you know, I don't remember the last time that I showed up to church on Sunday. So I don't want to even seem like I'm this perfect person or I was this perfect person. You know, that God just selected me because I was above all else. Now, like you said, I'm more like everybody than I'm not. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was truly doing right by people. Um, I clapped for others while I waited my turn. Um, I learned from the people before me. I supported everyone. Um, and I truly let my heart walk into every room before I did um, with no expectations in return. You know, with no expectations in return. That's just because of how I was raised, you know, and. I was truly a kid that, you know, I I found God within my own personal life. You know what I mean? I grew up a, a, uh, I grew up a Christian kid and I went to a Catholic high school, you know, and it, it was like it was like, you know, within that journey, I had to figure out what this relationship meant to me. Um, and through that process, you know, I, I truly developed my own relationship and I formatted all of the goals that I want to accomplish my life off of that relationship. And uh you know, I never asked my I, I tried to never ask myself or let myself, you know, get the perspective of why me, because I know why me, because I was doing the work and I was I was moving right by people. And, you know, uh, who better than me, you know, and, you know, I don't I don't want to take credit away from no one else. But, you know, I don't know if if anyone would have, you know, been able to handle the situation like this. So, uh, you know, just thinking about that. Yeah. By the way, you're right. I did the other thing, you know, when you look at God's work in hindsight, it always usually kind of lines up once you look at it. The other thing that's really obvious to me tomorrow, I'll just tell you, is that God chose somebody who could be a great communicator of this message. Mm -hmm. He chose a guy who's really good with words. And not only are you good with words, but when you say things, there's an energy transfer, there's an impact, there's an emotion when you say things. That's rare when someone's gifted with the athleticism you've been gifted with and clearly the IQ you've been gifted with to also have the ability to communicate on the fly like you do is a very rare thing. And it's clear that I really believe that you were chosen for this. I just really do. 
Um, I have to tell you, as a parent, I watched a conversation your mom had. Your mom was at the game and was trying to get to you, as I understand it. Is that correct? Yeah, she was it. My mom and my dad. Yeah. I'm just wondering, I asked you how it's affected you or changed you. What about how it's affected the people around you um, and their lives or even the way they interact with you? I'm wondering, I mean, obviously the attention you got is crazy. Every athlete and famous person in the world's talking about you all the time. But I've, you know, you know this, when you're a college player, it's one thing. You get to the NFL, the world changes around you a little bit, right? Like just yeah. the way the world responds to you is different. When mm -hmm. you're not well-known and then you're famous. When you're poor compared to when you're rich. So I have to imagine when you're alive and then you're not for a few minutes and then you're alive again, yeah. that the way the world treats you might change a little bit. Has it changed a little bit the way the world reacts to you? Yeah, definitely, man. Um, you know, the first the first way is um, people are touched. Like, people are truly touched. And, like, some people, like, people see me, they just want to hug. Like, people see me, they want to, you know, tell me a little bit about their story or, you know, somebody that they know or how they were affected or some things that they're going through personally, you know, so – um, people are touched in all kinds of different ways. And, you know, even outside of the situation, um, people see my mission, you know, people see the mission that I've been on, um, even greater now, you know, and that's a part of, you know, the blessings, um, because, you know, within my immediate family, nothing has changed. Like my mom, my dad, me, my brother, we're all still the same people, you know, like this hasn't, my mom and dad, once I decided to play football again, they're like, okay, this is what we're doing. And this is what you decided to do. And we're 110% behind you. You know, like whichever way it was, you know, they was going to be 110% uh, percent behind me. You know, so my parents haven't changed a bit. They're on my back just like I was in college. They're not, you know, they're not cutting me any slack. They're not, you know, <laughs> the expectations aren't different. If I still come home, and, you know, I spend some time at my parents' house. I'm going to be taking out the trash, doing dishes. Really? <laughs> I'm going to be vacuuming <laughs> the living room floor, like, you know. <laughs> so, you know, my immediate family, thank God um, that, you know, everything is still the same there. Um, but, you know, it, it has caused a little bit of trouble, you know, within, like, friendships and things like that to where, you know, some people feel obligated to, you know, be around me more. Or, you know, it, it it it's it's all over the place. I try to not focus on it. But, you know, when it's the personal people around you that you grew up with, that you wanted to be spending the rest of your life with, that you thought would be in your wedding, um, you know, it, it has a little bit of effect on you, you know. So, but, um, you know, the people that truly love me and, and love me with no expectation behind it are all still in my life. They're all still the same people with me. And we're enjoying life. You know, we all have a different perspective and a different appreciation for life, for sure. Are you 25 years old, Damar? Yeah, my birthday's in 20 days, 19 days today. You guys, my you're, listening to a, you're listening to a 25-year-old man with this much wisdom and perspective. If you ever wonder if you get something for your pain in life, one of the things you get when you survive temporary pain in your life is you get some type of insight, wisdom, talent, skill, thought, relationship. God gives you something for your pain. Clearly, he's dosed this man with the wisdom of 80 years on earth. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And I want to kind of tap in. We've only got a couple more minutes, brother. I want to tap into that wisdom for a second. Somebody who's going through, a, they're on the bottom right now right now in their life they're like man i'm 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 down right now you know mm -hmm. i just nothing's working out you know i my business just failed or i just broke up with my relationship or man just nothing i've done has been clicking for years i don't feel good about myself i'm down and this may sound like an interesting metaphor but they need sort of a life version of cpr to get back up again they need some life breathed back into them literally mm -hmm. what would you say to somebody who's just down right now and wants to make a comeback. What would you say to that person who's struggling with that right now? First thing I would say is, man, you can't, you can't conquer the world in one day. So, you know, just take yourself out of that big perspective and see how you can take one step and put the right foot in front of the left foot. You know, um, something I've heard a while is you can't sit in the pool of pity, you know? So even when you feel that feeling of, you know, you want to harp on, 
your your situation or your circumstances too much, get up and move. Like literally, I mean, get up and move, you know, so you can get yourself out of the feeling before you get sunk too deep into it. Um, that's the first way I would say just, you know, to deal with the emotions that come off of your situation. Don't allow yourself to sit in it, get up and move. And don't think you can just know that you can't conquer the world in one day. So wherever it is you want to be, you know, you got to take it step by step one day at a time. You know, I knew that I had to take it step by step one day at a time. I couldn't worry about, you know, trying to suit up and play in the playoffs again. Or I would have drove myself crazy. Literally, I would have drove myself insane. I had to know that it's going to be a journey. And even through this season that I just went through, I, you know, pe people deal with ACLs and don't come back in the time period that I did or any other injuries that don't come back in the time period that I did. So I know it's going to be a journey. Even when some people return off of ACLs, they're not, just, they're not their same selves. That first season out their back, they need time. They need steps. They got to put the right foot in front of the left and they got to walk the journey. They got to go through the ugly phases, you know? I feel like I just went through an ugly phase this whole season. You know what I mean? But I'm super proud of myself, you know? So go through the ugly phases. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. That's the big, that's the biggest part of it all. Focus on taking one foot in front of the right, go through the ugly phases, and just continue to try to get better one day at a time, one step at a time, man. Write down what you feel is necessary to accomplish what you want to get done, and then follow it. Make no negotiations with yourself whenever you set the plan out. Like, if you say you're going to do certain things at certain times or with certain people, make sure you do them. You know what I mean? Hold yourself to a different standard and accountability so that you can get out of your situation. You know, you can't get out of a situation doing the same things that put you into the situation. So, you know, that's that's like insanity, doing the same things and expecting different results. You know, and I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, you know, preaching that message to, you know, a lot of my personal friends in my life, you know, who are, you know, they complain about certain things or they bring certain things to my attention and then, you know, they keep doing the same things. You know, I'm I'm at the point where it's like you know, if you're going to keep dealing with the same certain type of things, don't even tell me because like, don't don't sit up here and just waste all my time when you mm -hmm. OK with accepting the same things. I got you where you are. If you want to get yourself to a different situation, you got to do different things to get different results. Yeah, that's my, that's, tell that's you, my perspective on it. That's so good. I brother, I'm just sitting here going, you got to be kidding. This is so good. You know what you are? You're a great perspective giver just you, who you are i gotta tell you today was a particularly not great morning for me and uh i was talking to my daughter and uh i said uh, she goes how are you doing today daddy i said i'm i'm not having a great morning bella i'm not having a good day <laughs> and then we hung up and i was kind of just re i've been so excited about this interview for so long it's kind of like re-preparing a little bit and then i literally said to myself i just everybody hear this for whatever you're going through I said, really? You're not having a great day compared to what? The day DeMar had on January 2nd, 2023, in that moment, that's a bad day compared to me. I had a couple of meetings not go the right way, right? Mm -hmm. And this man was in front of millions of people literally fighting for his life. Does does it give you a perspective, brother? Like when you're having what was used to be a bad day, you're like, well, not compared to like compared to what, right? Do you ever have that thought? Does it give you perspective on that? Man, every day, <laughs> every day. To be honest, you know, there's no day where I can you know allow myself to get too low anymore because you know I have the appreciation of life, you know. So no matter what's going on in life, just to still be here is a blessing because we all know some people who are who are not. Mm -hmm. And we all wish that we could have some people still with us. So no matter my situation, I'm able to allow myself to appreciate something. You know, it's it's hard to appreciate everything, you know, especially when, you know, for the people that are listening, especially when, you know, you're going through situations where your emotions are rising and, you know, you you're feeling whatever you're feeling the most. But I'm always able to uh, to bring myself to appreciate at least one thing. No matter what it is, no matter if it's the ability to still play football, because that could have been taken away from me. No matter if it's, you know, just appreciating family, my little brother, my mom, my dad, you know, no matter if it's just, you know, appreciating a, a deep breath, man, or appreciating wherever I am in the world. You know, if I'm in California, if I'm in at home, if I'm anywhere in the world, you know, I always bring myself to find at least one thing that I can appreciate. And it shapes your perspective differently. It really does.
Wow. Brother, I love you. I'm two things. I got one last question. One, I'm grateful for you. You as I'm well. I, you. I thank you for thank this. You. This was therapy thank for me. Good. Well, me too. And millions of people. The second thing is I just, as a brother, I'm proud. I'm shoot. I'm getting, I'm just very proud of you. Very Thanks. proud of you. You're uh you're remarkable. All right. A football question. Cause they'll be pissed if I don't ask. <laughs> so are you a free agent? No. Okay. So you're on I'm a contract. The Buffalo bills. I'm a Buffalo bill. Okay. Cause, cause I read something today. Bill's mafia. <laughs> I read something today. You know, I'm going to ask you about, they were like, Hey, I wouldn't mind ending my career playing for the Steelers. Right. Is yeah. that an accurate quote? Like, I just make you awkward. I asked you, I didn't push you too hard on what happened on the field. So I got to, <laughs> like, is like, I, people want to know what's going to happen with this young man. So we know you're, you're a bill, but is there a little party be eventually would love to finish up with the Steelers or you want to be a bill for life? I want to be a bill for life. You know, that's the team that truly took a chance on me and gave me opportunity, you know, to show what I can do. You know, I'm a late round draft pick. Um, throughout the whole entire draft, you know, I watched my name sit as the first name to best taken, you know, for like two, three rounds, um, you know, and I'm just like, will I ever get my opportunity? You know, I knew I had what it takes, you know, but, you know, opportunity, like preparation doesn't always meet opportunity. I was prepared, but I didn't know if the opportunity was going to come. So, you know, the Bills, when they selected me, um, you know, I was, I was, I felt so blessed, you know, and. I didn't know anything about Buffalo. I didn't know anything about Bills Mafia at the time, but you know, it didn't take long for me to sh for them to show me who exactly who they were. Um, and you know, for me personally, and then doing my research as well, just seeing how they treated their players, how they treat other players on other teams. You know, like mm -hmm. donated eighty thousand dollars to other people's team, like to other teams' foundations. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was just unbelievable of like the support that Bills Mafia has for the players of the Buffalo Bills. So first and foremost, I want to clear all ear. I want to be a Buffalo Bill for life because that's the team that took a chance on me. Um, when I answered that question, you know, I, I answered it from a, the perspective of, you know, a childhood perspective, you know, a kid that, you know, grew up his entire life. Like I told you, man, I had the dream for a long time. I had the dream for a long time. Uh, you know, just making it to the NFL and just being able to have an opportunity to, you know, take care of my family and, and give back to my community, something that I didn't have as a kid growing up, you know, so that was always my driving force. Um, but, you know, as a kid, you know, like playing the game, I always created myself as a stealer and I always, you know, played the game like that just as a kid. So the question they asked me, I answered it from a childhood perspective. And then I also gotcha. answered it from the perspective of, no, I don't want to play for the Steelers right now because I'm a Buffalo Bill. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still under contract with the Buffalo Bills. And then on top of that, uh, and then on top of that, you know, I spent five years at the University of Pittsburgh and I shared the facility with the Steelers. That's how I built a close relationship, you know, with them. And then, um, so that's college, five years. And then four years of high school where we had championship games at you know, the stadium. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I've had my fair share of time there. Um, how I answered the question was, it would more so be a dream to finish career than mm -hmm. to be playing now, you know? And I'm, yeah. and I say that, I said that lightly because, um, you know, you see players all the time who have a career, they'll have like an eight, 10 year career with, this team and then they'll go play for this team for X amount of time. And then when they finally retire, they'll go sign that $1 contract uh, with the team yeah. that they felt most connected to and then retire with that team. Um, right. you know, so, you know, I, it was, it was a lightly answered question that kind of like super stirred up social media, but um, sure to be honest, you know, even through all the chaos of it that it caused, I'm just super excited to, finally see people excited to see me play football again. Yes. You know what I mean? I like, that was a great feeling. That uh, Above all else, you know, above all the chaos it might have caused, that was just a great feeling. You know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. I dealt with so much, um, you know, controversy and, you know, like just craziness all year long. Just, uh, it just if, if, I needed to play, if, if I needed to be playing, if I was just all of a sudden just this trash player, 
<laughs> if I just was never good at football and I'm only famous for one thing and this and that, uh, mm. you know, so I went through a whole year of that, you know, and, you know, just chirping, you know, I don't allow none of that to enter my inner matrix, but, um, you know, it was super exciting to see people, you know, excited to see me play football again. So, like, you know, it turned me up a little bit, man. It made me go harder in the gym. Uh, it made me go harder in the gym those days because, you know, I'm excited for them to see what I got in the tank, too. I am as well. Take it easy on the Patriots. I'm a Patriots fan. I can tell you, this that? is the great – this is – please do that. This <laughs> is um, the greatest comeback story in the history of sports, and he is the most inspiring person in my lifetime – in sports and i'm so incredibly grateful that this conversation even exceeded my hopes and dreams for it um i rarely get emotional on the show i think i'm emotional because it affects me but i'm also got emotional damar through the conversation because i've done enough of these over the last decade to know when we're doing something that's going to affect so many people's lives mm -hmm. and that was a hundred percent you're doing today and god working through you so i love you and i'm very very grateful for you and thank you so much for being here today and i love you too thanks for having me like i said this was like therapy so you know i appreciate it you coming on i appreciate it being here yeah so grateful all right everybody i uh share the show <laughs> share this episode please and uh continue to max out your life god bless you everybody